freedom of choice. On a cold, blustery Boxing Day evening in the sleepy community of Caledonia, Ontario, the unthinkable happened. In shock, Joyce, a foster parent for the Hamilton Burlington SPCA, watched as her nervous and shy foster pup, Luna, run toward a gate that had been accidentally left open. Because I felt awful. I really, it was my fault that she got out, and I was just devastated. After a fruitless night of searching, Joyce contacted the HBSPCA and let them know what had happened. It was terrifying to think of that sweet little girl out all by herself and uh, she'd already been through so much in her short time. The shelter was closed for the holidays and staff was at a minimum. But upon hearing the startling news, Mac, Meg, Jen and Mike got into their cars and drove to Caledonia to lend a hand in the search. At the time, they had no idea what they were getting into. Um, right when I pulled up into the driveway, I didn't even know where to start. You just saw a bunch of grass, trees, bushes, a river on the other side, and a whole lot of dirt. Uh, well, staff jumped to action, as they always do. They're committed outside of these walls, so when they learned that she um, had gotten loose, they, they got their work done quickly, they all jumped in their own vehicles, and they, and they made their way out there in the rain, and they trudged through fields and came back covered in mud and soaked to the skin. After hours of searching, one by one, they left the search. The weather and the sheer scope of the situation causing each to tag out, one after the other. For the next couple days, Luna was nowhere to be seen, but she began to turn up on a trail cam, and it turns out she had not gone far. Joyce was relieved to see Luna alive and well, but catching her turns out to be harder than anyone ever would have thought. I think that, you know, I had known Joyce as a volunteer in kennels. You know, we had had friendly interactions, but uh, what I learned through this journey is her kindness and compassion and commitment to Luna was unwavering. She was willing to put in days and nights and time, you know, she's an active member of her community and she put all of that aside. Luna was number one, finding Luna was number one. She stopped going to all of her uh, extra uh, activities like yoga and her book club um, and she stayed vigilant to the search. And and it was, it was interesting because the, the cameras would go off that yes, she was there and it would just, she'd just be standing there because they're just pictures. But then there wouldn't be another picture for a, a couple of minutes. And in real time, when you're watching, your heart is just going like, you know, there's, where's the next picture coming? When's the next picture? What's she doing? And where the trap was in, in the other part of the house, I could actually go over to an upstairs window and, and look out directly down on it. And she would dart in and then picture we'd take it. And then, and then she'd dart out immediately, and then she'd dart in, and she'd dart out. And this would go on for like half an hour. Or she'd, she'd go outside the fenced area, and then she'd come back in again. And then she'd go just, it was just constant. Like she just must have been so exhausted. For weeks, Luna outsmarted the trap. Getting food without getting caught became her nightly ritual. The toll the stress took on Joyce was almost unbearable. She couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, and she was singularly focused on one thing, catching Luna and keeping her warm and safe. It, it was overwhelming. It was all I could think about. It was just, 
I, I couldn't concentrate on anything not to sit down and, and read a book. I got really good at pacing. I only lost five pounds. I couldn't eat. I, I really couldn't sleep. And you, you just kept looking and looking and looking. It was, it was overwhelming and all-consuming. And I, di I discovered the community support was like just incredible. So many people would message me and what's happened, is there anything we can do, what can we do? I'd be outside on the road walking and all these cars would stop every time somebody went by. It was somebody you knew, it's a, what can we do, any update, we'd love to help. And then every day uh, I would message Karen and Amanda and you know, always get a response and just, you know, you're doing great, Joyce, just keep doing it, anything you need from us. And it was just incredible to know that everybody was there for you um, if you needed anything physically or mentally or, or whatever, <laughs> people, were, people were there for you. Late one night, Luna tripped the trap and Joyce was able to get through safely back into the house. Absolute relief. Um, I checked my cell phone in the middle of the night. It was about 3.45 a.m., I think, when I opened her message. And just, it was a picture of her in the trap and another picture of her in the house. And she was safe and secure and we could breathe again. And I was as happy for Luna as I was for Joyce so that Joyce you know, she, she won. She got to get Luna back, and she deserved that for the effort that she put in. Today, Luna is safe and recovering in the warmth and comfort of Joyce's home. Their bond, formed through loss, redemption, and love, strong as a diamond. You can learn more about Luna at hbspca.com. with it and what you learned. I never want to experience it. <laughs> Found a new way to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs>